Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nanrebni. My name is Julia, and today I'm visiting Philadelphia. Philadelphia was simply Philly, the birth city and the former capital of the United States. City that has combined history, rich culture, museums, entertainment, great food, and amazing atmosphere. It is a perfect city to visit for a weekend, and more importantly, it is rather affordable. Don't believe me? A weekend in Philly. Here we go. So I'm in Philly. I have $150 for two days, but I already planned a very interesting and eventful weekend. But first thing first, transportation. Philadelphia Airport is quite easy to navigate. There are a few ways to get from the airport to the center city. Number one, by taxi, which will cost approximately $30 plus tip. Number two, by Uber or Lyft, that will cost about $17 to $25. And of course, number three, by public transportation, which is much more budget-friendly way. The center city train runs every half an hour and stops at each terminal. If you're planning on using public transportation a lot, you might consider purchasing the $13 Independence Pass that will give you unlimited rides on any public transportation for an entire day. Um, well, today I'm not intending on using public transportation much, so I'm only going to be buying one ticket. Which is considered a quick trip and costs only $6.25. The quick trip ticket can be purchased from this kiosk. Mind you, if I were to buy a ticket on the train, it would cost me a whole $10 in cash. Get off at the suburban station because that's where my first point of interest is. Philadelphia astonishes from a very first sight by its tall contemporary buildings, unique architectural elements, and surprisingly quite clean streets. First thing I want to do is to see Philly from the top. And I picked the recently opened One Liberty Observation Deck that offers 360 degree view of the city at 900 feet above ground. The entrance fee is $15, but the ticket is valid for 48 hours, and you can revisit the observation deck as many times as you want, even in the evening to see a very beautiful sunset. The elevator takes you up to the top, and there... Wow! Oh my goodness! That is incredible! All the way up from the 57th floor of One Liberty, you can see all major landmarks of Philadelphia, from University City to Delaware River and across to New Jersey side. The 360 degree view is incredible. It makes you feel like a bird flying over the tall buildings and admiring this beautiful city. But because this is a brand new observation deck, you can be sure it also offers top-notch gadgets that help visitors learn about what they see. You don't only get to view the city, there are also interactive maps. Where by touching any point of interest on the map, you will get information such as name, events, and dates it was built. These interactive maps offer electronic sightseeing tours around Philadelphia. By touching different places of interest, visitors activate the pop-up information on five different languages about any particular location. And I already know what I'm gonna do next. Amazing attraction, incredible views. You can honestly see absolutely everything, even William Penn statue on top of the city hall. 
which you cannot see from the city hall itself, obviously. After looking at Philadelphia from the top, I decided to explore the buildings and its historic sites up close. But before indulging in history of Philadelphia, I want to show you a couple more places that are located right by the observation deck. The center city in Philly is a very popular place to hang out, relax, and have a little fun. No matter the season, there's always plenty of events and activities for all ages. Love Park that houses the iconic cloth sign attracts crowds with German Christmas markets in winter and food trucks that offer delicious lunch in summer. Vendors sell savory meals, sweet treats, and sometimes even breakfast. Every Wednesday, you can spot wedding ceremonies right under the love sign. Across from the Love Park is Dilworth Park that occupies the entire courtyard in front of the City Hall. You can honestly spend quite some time admiring the beautiful architecture of this 19th century building and the flowers planted up front. Dilworth Park is a center of attractions in Philly and it's a truly beautiful space. From one side you have 19th century City Hall and from the other, tall Philadelphia buildings and urban life. The fountains in front of the city hall seem to attract not only children, but even growing men in suits. What are you gonna do if it's so hot? So I decided to take advantage of this opportunity myself and cool down a little. Just picture getting married under the love sign and then having your ceremony here in the Dilworth Park overlooking the fountains. When you think about lunch in Philly, you probably think cheesesteak. Yeah, absolutely. Cheesesteak is a must try while visiting Philly and we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, right now, I will be taking you to Reading Terminal Market that still serves food from early 1900s. Philadelphia Reading Terminal Market has been a very popular place for all Philadelphians since 1893. No wonder now it is one of the top attractions for all visitors. It is one of the oldest farmers markets in the country that operates still today. This market houses over 80 unique merchants. Some of them have been running their family business for over a hundred years. Fresh produce, variety of meats, Italian pasta, local honey and jams, finest seafood, and so much more. Honestly, you can walk hours and hours in here, buying, tasting, trying, touching, really good place. Today, the Reading Terminal Market is mostly famous for its Armini Brothers Bakery and their outstanding cannolis and other Italian desserts. The next, which according to the Travel Channel, makes the America's best pork roast sandwich. Bassett's ice cream that has been in business for nearly 160 years. And the Spataras cheesesteaks, which still serves a cream cheese and olive sandwich from the original 1947 menu. Hi, can I get the um, olive, cream cheese and olive? No, just like original recipe, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And here is my very budget-friendly lunch with a hint of history. Cream cheese on the bread with sliced olives. 
let's give it a try. of cream cheese and olives although I really don't like the olives but the combo itself is pretty good tears in my eyes burn while I'm waiting while I'm waiting for my turn while I'm waiting while I'm waiting for my turn while I'm waiting When you're in Philly for the very first time, you're probably tempted to take uh, one of those famous hop on, hop off the bus tours. But honestly, if you want to save $35 on the ticket and you're traveling on the budget just like I am, uh, there are many more ways to see all the attractions in Philly and pay uh, much less than that. First of all, Philadelphia Public Transportation System SEPTA could be an ideal way to travel to all of the Philly attractions. The buses are very frequent, and if you did purchase an Independence Transportation Pass at the airport, all of your bus or train rides would be already included in the pass. There's also a flash bus that comes every 15 minutes and travels the exact route as the famous hop-on, hop-off bus without extra stops. But since uh, most attractions in Philadelphia are concentrated in downtown area or what is called Center City, I'm just going to keep walking because it takes um, about 30 minutes to get from 15th Street Station all the way to the riverfront. And while I'm walking, I will take my time to enjoy the old, charming architecture and contemporary tall office buildings, 17th century red brick facades, green, beautiful and clean parks, and at last Philadelphia's very creative approach to fixing streets. But before we start uh, learning about Philadelphia history, I want to show you one more beautiful place. It is not very popular among tourists. It's located right in the Curtis Building in front of the Washington Square. Dream Garden is not an actual garden. It's a ginormous mural that's installed inside the Curtis Building. The design of the Curtis building can leave anyone speechless. The architect decided to place a courtyard right inside the building. But the real star is this 15 feet high and 49 feet long masterpiece of public art that was almost bought for $9 million and moved to Vegas. The Garden Mural was designed by Maxwell Parrish and executed by Tiffany Studios in New York City in 1916. Now anyone can come to the Curtis Building in Philadelphia and admire this piece of art absolutely free of charge. thousand pieces, each of them individually hand-fired to achieve this perfect color. 260 different colors in this mosaic. Too bad not that many tourists know about this magical place. 
So don't skip this one while visiting Philadelphia. Well, now it's about time for a little bit of history. The 55-acre green area between Walnut Street, Gray Street, 2nd and 6th is called the Independence National Historical Park. It is also known as Philadelphia Square Mile. It houses several sites, museums, and historical buildings associated with the American Revolution. And this is the centerpiece of the Independence Park. By the way, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. If Philadelphia is a birthplace of the United States, then the Independence Hall is a birth spot of our country, where on 4th of July, 1776, uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, John Adams, uh, Thomas Jefferson, just to name a few, signed a document that declared the independence of the United States from British Empire. I was a little wrong on the date, so definitely take an independence hall tour to find out how and when. So thanks to those people, we can all enjoy barbecue on 4th of July. No, but seriously, uh, while visiting Philly, you're absolutely obligated to visit the Independence Hall. The entrance to the Independence Hall is completely free, but it does require a ticket if you visit it before 5 p.m. March through December. The tickets can be obtained at the visitor center. However, it has to be done early in the morning. Between 5 and 7, we do tours where no tickets are required. Okay. Well, I have about an hour to kill, so I am going to visit another attraction located right across from the Independence Hall. I really don't want to stand in line, but unfortunately I have to. The line to see the Liberty Bell is long. But it does move at a slow pace. A very slow pace. What are you gonna do? It is a must-see attraction. After nearly half an hour wait and a security check, I finally got in. The hall that houses the bell is a small museum themed around liberty. It displays the word liberty in multiple languages. So here's a quick history about this iconic symbol of independence. The Liberty Bell was made in London and brought to Philadelphia in 1752 to be placed in the steeple of the Pennsylvania State House, now known as an Independence Hall. The iconic crack on the bell happened as soon as the bell rang for a very first time after arriving to Philadelphia. Since then, it has been repaired twice, but the crack only became larger, basically what you see right now. I don't know, half an hour waiting in line? bunch of Chinese tourists just surrounded the bell and that doesn't even don't even let you take a picture I don't think it's worth it I'm gonna show you a place where I can actually take a really good picture of the bell and also um, learn a little bit about its history without waiting in line just on the side of the building there is a window that gives a perfect view of the Liberty Bell. It was designed for those who don't want to wait in line or for those after hours visitors. Also, the speaker on the side will deliver the key information about this attraction in 11 different languages. very interesting trivia question. What attraction in Philadelphia is photographed the most? A. Independence Hall B. Liberty Bell C. City Hall If you answered any of the above to this question, then you are wrong because the correct answer is D. The statue of Rocky Balboa. Go figure.
It is finally 5 p.m. and I can head to the Independence Hall to take a free guided tour. The ranger briefly describes what we're going to see and leads the group to the building. Here he shows the state courthouse and where all of the participants would be placed. By the way, the iconic phrase to pass the bar comes from this particular bar that divided the courtroom, because only lawyers, judge and defendants were allowed to cross this bar during the hearing. Across from the courtroom is the hall where the Declaration of Independence was signed. All this furniture and chandelier and candle holders are original and have been there since the 18th century. The ranger is very knowledgeable and can briefly relay all the important information. The entire tour is approximately 15 minutes long. Nice little tour, very brief, just like I like it. Explains um, all the little key factors, all the details, everything um, in layman's terms. Just like I love it. I've seen Philly from the top, I've seen Philly up close. Now it's time to look at Philly from the water. I am heading to the waterfront Penn's Landing where there are few ways to see Philadelphia skyline from the water by cruising Delaware River. And of course I picked the cheapest one. Riverlink Ferry connects Philadelphia with Camden, New Jersey. Most people take ferry um, to travel to New Jersey to commute or to go to the aquarium, but honestly being $9 a ticket for a round trip is like the cheapest way to see Philly from the water. It departs the Spruce Street port every half an hour and costs only $9 for a round trip. The boat has two floors and you can either come inside or come outside and enjoy the sun. After everyone's on board, the ferry departs. From far away, you can clearly see the beautiful tall buildings of Philadelphia Riverfront, priced on average at a half million dollars. The smoky skyscrapers on the background, seasonal attractions and fairs, Penn's Landing and Benjamin Franklin Bridge. The ferry takes about 10 minutes to reach the other side of the Delaware River, but it is just enough time to admire the Philadelphia skyline and take some very cool pictures for Instagram. Passengers disembark, new passengers come on board, and in no time the ferry arrives back to Penn's Landing on Philadelphia side. By the time I got back to Philly it was already past 6 o'clock, which is closing time for all the museums and attractions and the beginning of the nightlife and entertainment. Spruce Harbor Park is one of the most popular afternoon hangout spots in Philly where anybody, any age, can find something to do.
One more popular place to be in the late afternoon is the Spruce Street Harbor Park at Band Landing. Spruce Harbor Park stretches along the Delaware River and attracts people of all ages. With its petal swans, riverfront restaurants, free hammocks and swings, and simply cool, laid-back, and very family-friendly atmosphere, where adults and kids can play, eat, pull down button fountains, and simply enjoy these nice summer nights. I also had a chance to spot an available hammock and decided to relax. What can be better than spending a wonderful afternoon in a wonderful place? Maybe a glass of beer. And the beer they have. Right next to the Spruce Street Harbor Park, the Philadelphians can enjoy Summerfest at Blue Cross River Rink. Every summer, Blue Cross River Rink hold, uh, hosts what's called uh, Summerfest, where you can hang out with friends, drink beer, go for rides, or roller skate, and the event is totally free. It is a festival that includes rides, craft beer, authentic food, and roller skating rink. Of course you have to pay something to roller skate, but to be honest, I am not that good at it anyway. My target is the craft beer. The pavilion offers $7 selection of crafts. The food from chickens and peats. And of course, games and entertainment for the entire family. All I'm missing right now is a friend to play with. Normally right here in Tim's Landing, every Thursday there's a movie screening right on that screen. But today is a free jazz festival. <laughs> See, events like that are happening in Philadelphia all the time. This is exactly why I always say you can find a lot of entertainment on a very tiny budget. You just need to know where to look. But speaking of the free movies, there are over a dozen locations in Philadelphia that screen movie on weekends. But tonight I want to show you The Oval. The Oval has become an incredibly popular spot to hang out. They've got beer, they've got games, they've got movies at night, they've got free yoga. The Oval is a park located in front of the Philadelphia Art Museum. This recently opened playground for adults and children attracts families with all sorts of activities starting the early morning. At night, the Oval transforms into a bring-your-own chair movie theater that offers refreshments, refreshing treats and drinks, and even refreshing sprayers. Box, son. What is that? Cheetah. Divided by the time of travel. 
You clowns want to play football, you got to move. Hi, Danny. Hi. Hey, hi. Why are you doing this? All right. Everyone from here over, go with Coach Butts. And it doesn't even matter what movie you're watching. It's a comedy, it's animation, it's it's anything, it's whatever, it doesn't matter. It's being a part of the community, being a part of the city, enjoying something together with other people, sitting down on blankets, sitting down on grass, enjoying something, watching a movie together, just doing something together. This is a real city life. This is the feeling that you get. It's incredible. So it's getting late. Right after the movie, I need to go and find a place to stay. Um, there are plenty of options in the center city. There are hostels, there are uh, rooms for rent that you can find on the Airbnb for $30, $50. Really, really cheap, but uh, it was surprising. But I found a hostel um, that cost $22 a night and the reason why it attracted me is because it's located in a um, historical building in Fairmount Park. The only downside, it's quite far. So I could take public transportation and then walk about a mile in Fairmount Park, but um, female, night, Philadelphia, Fairmount Park, about a mile walk. After weighing my options, I decided to take Uber. Plus, right chair in the big cities work extremely well. My Uber ride is going to cost me $8 tonight, and it brings me straight to my hostel. Too bad it's already so dark, so I won't see what's around until the morning. But I can definitely show you what's inside this historic building. On the inside, the hostel reminds me of a museum with old portraits, musical instruments, curtains, furniture, and so much more. This international hostel has a full kitchen, play lounge, and even a library. Go ahead and get comfortable. You'll be up in room uh, 22. The male and female dorms are located in separate sides of the building, which is always a plus. Oh, I'm going to pick a bed. I think I'll probably pick this one right here. I like the one on top. Well, first impression, it's an old building, which is really cool. Like, everything is really old. There's a library, um, the, um, there are pictures that look um, really ancient. Uh, they give you towels, which is really good because most hostels don't. And um, I guess I'll show you around in the morning because it's during sunlight and it's kind of better like that. And now it's time for bed. Good night, everyone. <laughs>